Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So I wanted to talk about the interview that Norman Reedus gave to comicbook.com. I'll leave a link down below to the article. There's a full, like, I think it's 11 minutes. Yeah, 11 minutes and 36 seconds. I mean, th this interview is really awesome. He talks about the Rick Grimes movies. They talk about filming The Walking Dead final season. They talk about a lot of different things. He kind of talks about how much he's he knows of where the final season is going and etc. It's a really fun and a really cool interview, so I really recommend checking it out. I'll definitely leave a link down below. In it, he actually talks about, and this is what I want to focus on here, he talks about, or he mentions one thing about the first 10 episodes or so of this season and, and, and the direction that they're going in and what the focus is there and then what happens afterwards. And so I want to talk about that and talk about what we kind of know What's likely going to happen in the comic? And yeah, because I do think what he told us largely or largely, it really, really hints anyways, that this is likely going to be some of the main focus in the trailer and that there are aspects to the comic art that we aren't necessarily going to be getting into right away. It seems like Angela Kang has written a lot of original stuff. There is a lot more Maggie versus Negan drama. And I guess the Reapers might play a role in there. Like, it, it seems like the first part is going to be primarily that there's going to be a lot of Commonwealth stuff, but there's going to be a lot of intense moments like crazy things are going to happen. And, and I know as someone who really wants to get into that drama, apparently it gets really bad. Like apparently a lot of crazy stuff happens. So I, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for it. But obviously if you are new here, make sure to be a subscriber. If you want to get my trailer breakdown, my official Comic-Con trailer video, I'm going to be doing a breakdown of that trailer coming out tomorrow. It's coming out in like, I mean, a little over 24 hours from now. I'm going to be doing live streams beforehand and afterwards. There's going to be so much shit to talk about. I really am so, so excited. I, I cannot wait. So, yeah, obviously, make sure to be a subscriber if you want more walking to content like that. Or go follow me on Twitter because I will be tweeting live updates and etc. But let's talk about this. So, uh, Norman Reedus did say that Daryl... In this first part, he really helps Maggie with what she's going through. That's because of Negan, obviously, right? Like, Negan, his presence there is affecting her a lot. There's also a lot of stuff with the Reapers as well. And I think something that could happen is a bunch of side characters, like C, like C. Thomas Howell, there's, there's that, it's the actor. Whoever he plays, he plays that Hilltop resident. I think his death is going to play a role, because I do think he's going to die. I think there's a few other characters that are going to die, and I think they're going to die as a result of the Reapers. And so Maggie might feel some guilt over that as well, because her return here brought, you know, this this new group here and has gotten people killed. There's the whole Maggie versus Negan thing, like I was saying. So there's all of that. There's also the fact that the hilltop is burnt down. So I could see why this first part definitely is very Maggie focused. Because there is so much there. She should be the lead character. That's kind of where the story should go. Honestly, I actually think Maggie works better as the lead character right now over Daryl. Because Daryl, he doesn't work as a lead character, right? Like, I'm not saying he's, he is a lead character. I'm just saying, like, he shouldn't be the front and center character. Because he works, the I mean, really the best at being the sidekick, right? Like, he's like Rick's sidekick. So, I think him being Maggie's sidekick in that sense, I think that works really well. He's... He's perfect for that role, I think, anyways. And so what Norman Rita says is that he's helping Maggie a lot with what she's going through. A lot of that stuff turns into a fight, which turns into a larger fight. And then apparently afterwards turns into something completely different. So I'm really, I'm fascinated with that. Like, what exactly does that mean? Like, fights turning into larger fights. Like, obviously, things are going to start to escalate. Certain things between Maggie and Negan are going to start to turn into really, I guess, insanity in terms of how much Negan really gets inside Maggie's head, how much Maggie really wants Negan gone. What happens there between, like, Judith and Herschel? Is there going to be this crazy conflict that happens? It's like, it's literally like season 9A all over again, right? Because Negan, I mean, man, he really affected the story there as well. He spent all that time in the cell. But, like, he really affected the story a lot there, and, and he's doing it again, but it's only because they haven't dealt with it yet, right? So, I think that's why they're going to deal with this part in the first part here of the, the final season. This way, when you get to the second part and third part, it's going to be more of the Commonwealth, and then the third part being more of, like, wrapping up the entire series, saying goodbye to all these characters, big deaths, and etc. Uh, he did say that the first ten episodes, and again, I, I did see something from episode nine. Uh, that I'm not going to talk about too much here, but I would say it's not necessarily 10. I think it's like 8 or 9. I think something's going to happen in 8. And then in 9 kind of is the introduction to other things. Then 10, I think, is where things get really insane and etc. 
but I can totally see what he says. Like Norman Reedus says that the first 10 episodes are, are like one thing and then it's just going in that one direction. And it's, it involves Maggie's story mostly. And like I said, that has to do with Negan, the Reapers, the burnt uh, or Hilltop being burnt. Right. So that they got to rebuild that. And then afterwards they do a complete 180. And now it's kind of like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, which I love when he said that. And obviously that's the Commonwealth. They're going to be dealing with Maggie and Negan. And this happens in the comic, but it's very different. In the comic, Rick is dealing with a lot of stuff with the Saviors. He's dealing with a lot of, like, um, post-all-out war stuff. You know, the Sanctuary was having a hard time. There's a lot of stuff with Sherry, and he was dealing with a lot there. Things got really heated between him and Dwight especially. And it just got really crazy. There was all this shit happening. And then out of nowhere, the Commonwealth arrived. Like, we already met them. We saw them at the at the Commonwealth. We already we were already introduced to the Ark, but they came out of nowhere. Rick was just outside dealing with all this shit, and then another problem, an extreme problem, comes out of nowhere. And I can see what what Norman Reedus means by that by doing a complete one eighty because your whole world changes just like that. The Commonwealth will arrive. Uh, Daryl's gonna meet Pamela Milton in that scene, and then he will be taken to the Commonwealth. So Daryl will travel with with uh, Pamela Milton to the Commonwealth. And I imagine that's going to happen in episode 10. And then that's where we get, yeah, we see his reaction to, to all of that. So that's interesting. I really like the fact that he said that because I think that right there clarifies a lot of what is going to or what the season is going to be about. You can kind of see the structure a lot, right? The first part is going to deal with the Maggie versus Neek and stuff. Intro to the Commonwealth. There might be some other conflict with Yumiko in the Commonwealth, and and not even that. There's going to be some stuff with Stephanie and learning about everything, Mercer and, and etc. There's all that going back to Alexandria. There's going to be all of that, but there's going to be some Reaper drama. Uh, Negan and Maggie are going to be fighting a lot, and then the then they come to to the Alexandria. Daryl meets the Commonwealth for the first time, and then you get into all of that, which I think is is really going to be very exciting and. Honestly, for most of the second part, it's going to be them trying to, I guess, grapple with what do they do with the Commonwealth? This group has arrived now. They can offer us security. And you got to remember, too, the first part, we're going to see them really be unraveled, right? And Alexandria are, are unraveled, rattled, right? Like in Alexandria, they're they're almost going to be going a little nuts and crazy because like they have no food. The, everything's destroyed. People, you know, people are going to be stressed out. Things are going to start to get heated, especially with the Maggie and Negan thing. Maggie's return is going to cause a lot of shit. And I think that people are going to be really upset and wanting a normal life when Alexandria shows up at those doors. Or Alexandria, when the Commonwealth shows up at their at their gates anyways, it's going to change everyone's world. And everyone's going to want to join. And so Daryl has to find a way to adapt to that. He might not want to. Other people are going to. It's going to cause a lot more conflict. And if you've read the comic... There's a lot of stuff I can see being here in this second part. There's going to be some war stuff, def not war stuff, but like rioting definitely towards the end. There's going to be that. And I do think the Dwight death scene where Rick kills Dwight, they're going to do a version of that, I think, at the end of the second part around their episode. I guess that would be 15 or 16 of the second part. We're going to see Daryl kill Magna. That's my prediction anyways, that he's, is that he's going to kill Magna. I think it makes the most sense. Magna is kind of... And that's the thing. We're going to know in the first part here, right? In the first part of the final season, we're going to know who takes Dwight's role there. And if Magna is starting to act a lot like Dwight and be very rebellious, very, you know, then I could totally see that happening. So we'll have to wait and see there. The third part, they're going to kind of resolve a lot of the Commonwealth stuff. And then you just kind of transition to the ending, which I won't get into there, but there's going to be probably a 15, 20 year time jump and etc. I could see them closing it out that way. Again, there's a lot of unknowns with this. There's a lot of things that they are most likely going to do. Things that they've created, original stories, because Angela King was going to do that anyways. And so, you know, it's cool that I can at least see the structure. I know exactly what they're going to do. But there's just a lot of things that I don't completely understand in terms of, like, how long are you going to do this for? You can't do this for three or four episodes. Because that's the thing, too. If this was, if this was Gimple, to be honest... I do think he would stretch out a lot of things farther than they should be. But Angela Klein doesn't do that. If she if she does want to stretch out a certain storyline for like two or three episodes, like a certain arc, she will. But then then she'll do other things with other characters in, in, the, in the meantime. And I think that that has changed the viewing for The Walking Dead. Like if you think about it, every episode for season nine and ten 
has a big part of the story that you need to focus on. There's like a couple of episodes where they, they weren't as exciting and great. Like I'm thinking of season nine episode, uh, not six, episode seven, I believe it was. I think that one was just Daryl and Carol talking in the woods, literally, which I know people could say it's like every episode, but no, that it was because we just did the six year time jump. It was a crazy time jump. We've never done anything like that. Daryl was living in the woods. Carol had long hair. Everything it was so different. And so I think you spent that time there. And I think it was important to spend that time with those two characters learning a lot more about each other because they haven't seen each other in a while. So, yeah, anyways, I think we're going to get those episodes here and there, obviously, in the final season. I'm just excited to see where the story is going to go in the second and third part and the original content here. But I do like what Norman Rita said. That was it was really cool. There's a lot of other things that I want to talk about, and I don't think I have the time. Like, I could do other videos today, but I, I figured I think my next video after this is going to be the Comic-Con trailer breakdown. I think this will be the last one for the day, and then I'll do I'll probably do a live stream and stuff tomorrow. But we have some stuff to talk about regarding Stephanie and Leah's return. And um, I, I do want to talk about that because we've we've learned some new information, but I most likely will do the video on that Sunday or Monday. And it really depends because we could literally see scenes of them, obviously, in the final season trailer. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But post all your thoughts down below. Hope you all enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.